Forget about the light bulb. How many red-pilled citizens does it take to change a civilization? HBR Talk with Hannah Wallen. Last week, we talked about the bureaucratic mind virus, an adaptability inhibitor which undermines a key element of the infected mind's problem-solving apparatus, the ability to consider details of a given concern even if they don't fit into a standardized model of assigned tasks. Policy and procedures, management-approved or agency-approved social-political perspectives, and documentation requirements all act as constraints on the bureaucrats' deliberations and any resulting decisions. Further, the authoritarian nature of bureaucracy creates a mentality that bulks at changes of perspective and reversals of opinion, such that any attempted reforms end up twisted into a pattern that the bureaucratic mind can consider compatible with the previous rule set. We pointed out that in a gynocentric society where women's purported interests are the moral measuring unit around which the majority of government and corporate policy procedures and programs are designed, any interests unique to men are not going to fit into the bureaucrat's menu of choices. If he is presented with policy reforms, his natural tendency is going to be to filter them through that authoritarian gynocentric outlook. Regardless of the reformer's intent, the conclusions will be an authoritarian gynocentric approximation of the reformed policy. We talked about some of the ways this can impact men and boys, discrimination in education services, in the criminal justice system, and in family law and its administration, in the provision of social services, as well as in financial obligation to support these services. A lot of examples and patterns were discussed, leading up to this week's discussion on how the men's rights movement can approach reform in the face of this phenomenon. Left to its own devices, the bureaucracy will continue to try to fit every reform through its existing filter. Our challenge, should we accept it, is to fix a system that has been, by accident or by design, built to respond to repairs by adjusting itself back to the original dysfunction. There are two main directions one could take to deal with this. One is to abandon the system altogether, and the other is to rebuild it in order to eliminate that problem. Both of these are going to involve tearing down the existing system. That it does have to be dismantled before it can be fixed means that one doesn't have to choose between those two main directions. Parts of the bureaucracy are outdated. Parts were never a good thing. Even if abandoning the entire system isn't the chosen direction for the whole movement, collectivists and individualists within the movement can agree that there is fat that has to be trimmed. Both pathways, and anything in between, would also require vigilance and stewardship. Reliance on government leads to an authoritarian nightmare if that government is unwatched. Abandonment of the bureaucracy necessarily relies on individuals to be responsible and accountable for themselves and as a community responsible for their freedom, or another bureaucracy will rise up to take the place of the last one. In other words, a working solution can never become somebody else's problem because somebody else is always going to get lazy, greedy, jaded, or make mistakes. There cannot be effective legislative and policy reform without two things. Reformers have to be involved in the political process, and public awareness of the need for reforms has to be enough that public support for them will counter any opposition to them. That journey has been ongoing. The biggest question is, in light of the circumstances under which we're traveling, where do we go from here? Tune in to HBR Talk as we consider this question and discuss the roles of the movement, of men, and of women in its potential answers. The discussion streams on multiple platforms. You can tune in Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern via the link in the low bar or find other viewing and listening options for that time or later on badgerfeed.com.